Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! A former senior police officer has spoken exclusively to Channel 4 News after a report he'd written detailing command failings at Hillsborough was covered up. Retired Chief Inspector Frank Brayford claims he was told to keep quiet in the wake of the disaster. This comes following a recent inquest ruling that the 96 who died were unlawfully killed. Our Chief Correspondent Alex Thompson has this report. A policeman in the midst of the disaster. To actually see that number of people, I just thought, this isn't right. It's to haunt me there that perhaps I didn't do enough on the day. Another in the midst of the cover-up that followed. It doesn't just stop at South Yorkshire Police, does it? I, I, think, this, I think this went all, all the way up to Westminster. These days, Hamilton Road Police Station is derelict. But tonight we can show just how badly relations inside this police station responsible for Hillsborough had broken down in the run-up to the match. Brian Mole, the Hillsborough expert who'd handled many matches there, ousted, moved to Barnsley just before the game and replaced by this man, David Duckenfield. We've spoken to a chief inspector who served here at Hamilton Road in the run-up to the Hillsborough match. He was a close personal friend of Brian Mole's. These were men who had a plan for the game. They knew football, they knew Hillsborough, they'd done it before. And this chief inspector says the attitude and arrogance of David Duckenfield to all of that set the scene for the disaster. These days, former Chief Inspector Frank Brayford is not a well man, but he's still 100% Yorkshire grit. You couldn't push Frank around in 1989. You can't push him around now. Brian then, in my presence, rang, Duck and did, no, rang David Duckenfield and he said, look, David, uh, we were at this manager's meeting and uh, you, you, you'll, you'll be in charge on the day. There's so much that you need to know. And he said, I've already spoken to Frank Brayford. You've got me, me my answer. I shan't be attending. And he put the phone down on it. Duckerfield put, yeah, put the phone down. Put the phone down on Chief Superintendent Mole. Outrageous. And, you know, we looked at one another and said, well, never mind what we said. By the eve of the match, with Frank Brayford and Brian Mole sidelined, Sheffield Wednesday FC had become seriously concerned about David Duckenfield. The day before the match, a senior official at Sheffield Wednesday Football Club sent Brian Mole two tickets for the game. Now Frank Brayford says that's because the club had become so concerned about policing arrangements they wanted a senior officer who knew what to do if anything went wrong in that stadium, even as a guest. That evening, Brian Mole on his way home from work, arranged to call in at Frank Brayford's place in Barnsley. And Brian tapped his coat pocket and he said, Frank, I've got two tickets here for the director's box and they've come from Bert McGee. And Bert McGee wants you to be there and me and he's given me these two tickets for us. From the club? From the club, from the director's box, yeah. Brian said, Frank, I am really worried because he'll make a of this tomorrow. And that's his exact words. In the end, neither of them felt they could go to the match. At the recent inquest, David Duckenfield disputed that he was high-handed or arrogant, but it was accepted that relationships had broken down prior to the match. Subject of an ongoing police investigation, the Hillsborough disaster reverberates around Sheffield right now. Frank Brayford, insisted on writing up a report about David Duckenfield's conduct until a West Midlands Police senior detective suddenly appeared in his office. And he said, Mr Brayford, you will not be allowed to give evidence at the Taylor Inquiry. And as he moved then, he stood with his back to the, back to the door and he's holding the, the, the door handle so nobody could come in. And he said, and this conversation never happened. So I won't be allowed to give evidence to the Taylor inquiry and this conversation never happened and he gone. He left? He left, walked straight out, gone. And, and I, I mean, I was, I was, a man like me stuck for words, I was gobsmacked.
Douglas Earls, by contrast, wasn't banned. He was very much at Hillsborough and can't forget. It all haunt me that did I do enough? Did I help enough? Mouth to mouth, chest compressions. With command and control failing, he simply leapt into the overcrowded terrace, hauled people out and fought to save one man all the way to hospital. Unfortunately, I got to Northern General Hospital and the doctor said, I'm sorry, but you've lost him, which is really upsetting because he worked so hard to keep him alive. And I just wish he'd done more, but... Memories of that day haunt him, but so does the fact that South Yorkshire police continue to try to blame the fans to defend the lie, even at the recent inquests. How they would try and defend that situation. Yes, I know where they're coming from, um, because at that time that's what was said, but I, 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 it beggars belief they spend so much money yeah, on something, defending something like that. Right now it's easy, fashionable even, to call South Yorkshire police rotten to the core. But these are just two men who've spoken out, who acted in their different ways against their commanders for the Liverpool fans. And there are many more of them. Alex Thompson, Channel 4 News, Sheffield. Now, if you'll forgive us for a moment, we'd like to share just a little bit of news about ourselves. We've won a BAFTA for our reporting of the terror attacks in Paris last year. An award we wanted to use to pay tribute to one of our finest foreign producers, Sarah Corp, who was unable to be with us last night. And behind the scenes are a team of about 100 people who put this programme together, so the award was for them. I've been